purport by Srila Prabhupada. The so-called law of gravitation which sustains the planets is described herein as the potency of the Lord. This potency is invested by the Lord in the way that an expert sacrificial Brahmana puts fire in the Arani wood by the potency of Vedic mantras. By this arrangement, the world becomes habitable for both the moving and non-moving creatures. The conditioned souls who are residents of the material world are put in the womb of Mother Earth in the same way the seed of a child is put by the father in the womb of the mother. This conception of the Lord and the earth as father and mother is explained in Bhagavad Gita 14.4. Conditioned souls are devoted to the motherland in which they take their birth, but they do not know their father. The mother is not independent in producing children. Similarly, material nature cannot produce living creatures unless in contact with the Supreme Father, the Supreme Personality of God. Srimad Bhagavatam teaches us to offer obeisances unto the mother along with the father, the Supreme Lord, because it is the father only who impregnates the mother with all energies for the sustenance and maintenance of all living beings, both moving and non-moving. Thus ends the Bhakti Vilanta purport. This is another prayer offered by the sages to Lord Varaha. What are they telling here? O Lord, for the residential purposes of all inhabitants, both moving and non-moving. So the earth is a place of residence for so many living entities. And essentially they are of two kinds, moving and non-moving. Sthavara Jangama. Sthavara means that which is non-moving. Jangama which means which is moving. This earth is your wife. Earth means the predominating deity of the earth planet. Bhu Devi, she is the wife of the Supreme Lord. And therefore, uh, the Supreme Lord is the father, Supreme Father, and Mother Earth, say Mother Earth, she is the mother. Bhu Devi is our mother. We offer our respectful obeisances unto you along with Mother Earth. So they are now not only offering their respects to the Lord, but they are offering their respects to Mother Earth also. In whom you have invested your own potency in the Earth, the Lord has invested his own potency how has he done that? Just as an expert sacrificer puts fire in the arani wood for sacrifice, fire sacrifice, a special type of wood called arani wood is used. So how is that wood lighted in the beginning? So nowadays we use a matchbox or a lighter. But formerly that was not the system. Formerly, a Brahmana would chant Arani Mantra, one type of mantra. And that mantra generates fire. Now, this is not possible for all Brahmanas. This is not possible for those Brahmanas who are not qualified, unqualified Brahmanas, no. Only qualified Brahmins. What kind of qualification? The potency of the mantra they chant. The potency of the mantra. Just hmm? like the Hare Krishna mantra. What is the potency of Hare Krishna mantra? That was demonstrated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he met Ishwara Puri, when he had gone to Gaya for his father Shraddha, so Ishwara Puri gave him one mantra, Hare Krishna mantra. So what is the potency of the mantra? When he began chanting, he went into ecstasy. The 
that is the potency of the mantra. But when somebody else chants, ordinary people chant, they don't go into ecstasy. Therefore, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went into ecstasy, the other people, especially his family members and his neighbors and people who knew him, to be a great uh, scholar, to be a very nice uh, devoted person to his family, etc., they became alarmed. What has happened to him? It looks like he's going mad by chanting this mantra. They couldn't understand what is this ecstasy. Because they are not witnessed, somebody chants a mantra and they become ecstatic. They are not witnessed anything like that before. Mantra can produce so much of uh, change in a person simply by chanting one mantra. Is it possible? No. We don't think it's possible, like mantra. Similarly, today's brahmanas, they do not know this. Or if they know also, they cannot do anything about it. That chanting one mantra can produce fire. So, the Vedic scriptures say that in Kali Yuga, all types of fire sacrifices are not recommended because we don't have qualified brahmanas who can chant the mantra effectively. So, there is one chapter in the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. Krishna performing the pastime of delivering the wives of the yagyik brahmanas. These yagnik brahmanas, they were expert in karmakanda rituals which are specially meant for elevation to heavenly planet. This is described in the Bhagavad Gita also, second chapter. Yamimam pushpitam vacham pravadanti avipaschitaha. Avipaschitaha. There are certain class of people who study the Vedas but are not very intelligent. Their intelligence is stolen away by the illusory energy. Kama is taiste hruta jnana. Because they have too much of desire for material enjoyment. They are called Kama is taiste hruta jnana. Hruta jnana means they have lost their intelligence. So in the Bhagavad Gita they are described in two different ways. In the seventh chapter, it is described Hruta Jnana. Second chapter, they are described Avipaschitaha. Not very intelligent. Hmm. Kama, no. Um. Yamimam Pushpitam Vacham Pravadanti Avipaschitaha Vedavada Ratapartha Nanyada Stiti Vadinaha. They are called Vedavada. They say we are very strict followers of the Vedas. Uh, but because they are avipaschitaha, because they are kama istaisthi hruta jnana, they say the purpose of the Vedas is simply elevation to heavenly planets to enjoy good life after performing all these pious activities as recommended in the Vedas. So what is the next verse? 42nd and 43rd. Uh, 43rd verse. Uh, Raghava Sharan. Kamatmanaha. See, Kama is taste Hruta Jnana. Same thing. Kamatmana Swargapara. Hmm. Janma Karma Phala Pradam. Hmm. Kriya Vishesha Bahula. Hoga Ishwarya Gatim Prati. Translation. Shravana Mangala. 42nd, 43rd. Together, the translation is given together. Recommend various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets. Fruitive activities means? What is fruitive activity? Activities? Hmm? 
for material gain which are especially meant for what? Material gain meant for what? For sense enjoyment. For enjoyment. Sense enjoyment. Yes. That's called fruitive activity. Hmm. Bhogaishwarya, Gatim Prati. Bhogaishwarya. Gati, the ultimate goal of all these Vedic rituals, the Vedic uh, scriptural injunctions, everything is Bhoga Aishwarya. Bhoga means material enjoyment, Aishwarya means material opulence. Because material enjoyment requires material opulence. You see? That's why. Uh, sometimes when people see a brahmana very poverty stricken, they'll say, what kind of brahmana is this? He's poverty stricken condition. So they think if somebody is poverty stricken, uh, they can't uh, enjoy life. Hmm? But what is the truth about the enlightened brahmanas like Sudama, who keep themselves in a poverty stricken condition, if by arrangement of providence, arrangement of Krishna, they don't have sufficient wealth. What is their real wealth? What is the real wealth? The knowledge, the transcendental knowledge that my happiness, my well being, it's not dependent on any material wealth. It's not dependent on any material condition. Why? Enlightenment means Aham Brahmasmi. I am spirit soul. I am not this body. I don't belong to this world. I belong to Krishna. So in my relationship with Krishna, in my service to Krishna, in my devotional service to Krishna, I am fully satisfied. Tushyanti cha ramanti cha. Machitta madgata prana bodhayanta parasparam kathayanta shchamam nityam. Tushyanti cha ramanti cha. In the Greek philosophy, they say there was one Socrates. The Socrates was not interested in worldly enjoyment. Like a brahmana. He was like a brahmana. So what would he do? He would spend time discussing philosophy. What is the goal of life? Who we are? So he had a higher understanding. Quite an enlightened person. So when he would be sitting and discussing with other similar interested few people. Most people will not be interested in this type of discussions. But he had some students and he had some... Uh, uh, interested people who would discuss with him this philosophy, uh, this higher knowledge. So his wife would uh, become very, very upset if he would sit for long. So his wife would come and say, enough of your uh, discussions. Now stop this. Come and attend to some household uh, things, important things. You don't care for any householder requirements. You're simply lost in your own world. You should also take care of. So like that she would, like usually it happens <laughs> to wives to such people if they are not, the wife is not also enlightened. So then uh, she would shout and shout and shout. Sometimes her anger would be so much that when he would not respond to the shouting, he would be like, her nature to fight, shout. He would continue. Then once she became so angry that uh, she poured water on him from the top. A bucket of water. She became so very angry that he is not coming to his senses. He is so thick-skinned, he is so indifferent. So, all this, the followers and the students, they were shocked. What is this behavior of this lady? She's shouting, 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 okay. That's her uh, nature. 
But why is she throwing water like this? Pouring water from the top. He became completely drenched. So they're looking at him. What is his reaction? So he's smiling. And he just made one statement. After the thunder comes the rain. He just did not pay much heed to that. So this is the state of enlightenment. There's the state of enlightenment. That they know where is the real happiness. Where is real uh, pleasure. Where is the real wealth of a person. Not in material wealth, material enjoyment, material sense gratification. No. So Bhagavad Gita teaches that. That the purpose of the Vedas is not this elevation to heavenly planets, enjoy heavenly pleasures. Huh? Why Krishna says this Bhogaishwarya Gatim Prati is not the real purpose of the Vedas. What does it say in the next verse? Bhogaishwarya Prasaktanam Such people who are very much attached to material enjoyment and material opulence Taya apahruta chetasam. See what happens. Apahruta chetasam. See I told you that second chapter whatever is there elaborated in the later chapters. So you see the link. Kama is taistair. Hruta jnana. The same thing is here. Bhogaishwarya prasaktanam. Taya apahruta chetasam. Then what happens? Yavasayatmika buddhi samadhav na vidhiyate. 41st verse already Krishna has spoken about. Yavasayatmika buddhi ekeha kurunandana. Hmm? With one pointed attention, one should be interested in this Yavasayatmika buddhi. Hmm? Hmm? In Krishna conscious intelligence. But, Apahruta Chetasam, when their intelligence is lost, Samadhau na vidhiyate, Vyavasayatmika buddhi samadhau na vidhiyate. They cannot, their intelligence cannot become fixed up in Krishna consciousness. Not possible. So therefore, Prabhupada says in that uh, Incident where Narad Muni cursed Nalakubara Mani Griva, the sons of Kubera. What did Narad Muni contemplate? He said, these two boys, too much of wealth, and they are carried away by this wealth and the subsequent uh, facility for sense enjoyment. They are completely lost. Apahruta Chetasa. So he took compassion on them uh, and he put them in a condition where they'll simply have to stand naked for very, very long time. Like some trees, they simply stand, they cannot move, they cannot uh, uh, react. The scorching heat, uh, scorching sun, or torrential rain, or biting cold, or even somebody comes and attacks, or tries to cut down the tree. The tree cannot do anything, cannot protest. Even if somebody throws a stone, to uh, get a fruit which is not reachable, the tree cannot refuse. Tree cannot refuse. Helpless. So he put them in that condition. He cursed them to become trees. But his mercy was that they did not simply become trees on the earth. They became trees in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. The foster father of Krishna. 
and Narad Muni also arranged that they would be delivered by Krishna. And that's extraordinary. That deliverance is uh, only possible by either the mercy of Krishna or the mercy of his pure devotees. And what do the scriptures say? Pure devotees are more merciful than the Lord. They are more merciful than the Lord. So ordinarily people cannot get Supreme Lord's mercy directly. They cannot get Supreme Lord's mercy directly. But they can very easily get the mercy of his pure devotees. That's why the sages here are praying to the Lord along with his wife. His wife means everyone other than the Lord who are his associates are all his devotees. Everyone. Ekala Ishwara Krishna Arsabha Bhritya. Bhritya means servant. But servant, what kind of servant? In the spiritual world, all are loving servants. Loving devotees. So, uh, the sages are offering their obeisances, their prayers, their respect, respectful obeisances. We offer our respectful obeisances unto you along with Mother Earth. Bhudevi, Sri Vaishnava tradition, any temple you go, they always worship the Supreme Lord with Sri Devi and Bhudevi. There, uh, what we say is uh, Utsava, Vigraha. Always uh, Narayana with Sri Devi and Bhudevi. Uh, so, uh, this particular worship is very important that uh, <coughs> The uh, impersonalists, they worship the Supreme Lord as the Supreme Brahman, impersonal Brahman. The Paramatma Vadis, they worship the Lord as the super soul. But the devotees, they worship the Lord along with his Principal devotee, Supreme Lord as the personal Brahman. Prabhupada says impersonal Brahman, localized Brahman and personal Brahman. Supreme Lord is Brahman, Supreme Brahman. But that Supreme Brahman is understood in three different features by the knowers of the truth, absolute truth. Hmm? So, what is the significance of this personal Brahman? What is the significance? That the devotees, they worship the Lord, who in his personal feature is never alone. In his personal feature is never alone. He is always with his devotee. And among his devotees, his topmost devotees are those of the Internal potency. And internal potency also the pleasure potency. So always the devotees worship the Vaishnavas always. Vaishnavas always worship the Lord with his internal pleasure potency. Pleasure potency is of two kinds. Hmm? Svakiya and Parakiya. So, worshippers of Sita Ram and Lakshmi Narayan are worshipping the Lord with his pleasure potency, internal pleasure potency, Swakiya. Hmm? And the uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavas worship Radha Krishna. The Radha Krishna. Hmm? Radha Krishna worship is Again, the worship of the Lord with his internal pleasure potency, but parakya. In any case, the Vaishnavas always worship the Lord with his internal pleasure potency. 
and the understanding is that the lord's devotees especially his internal pleasure potency potential devotees are more merciful than the lord more merciful than the lord hmm? while describing the uh, the purport to that hari krishna mantra in the famous album that was produced in the early days hmm? so prabhupada explains uh, hara hare when we say it is addressing the uh, the supreme mother hara or radha hmm? so the supreme uh, mother hara helps us in uh, reaching the supreme father hari or krishna so when you say hare krishna we are seeking the invoking the blessings of mother hara or radharani the most merciful uh, mother in getting the grace uh, of the supreme father hari or krishna so chanting hare krishna means approaching the supreme lord through the uh, mother supreme mother therefore here this uh, sages offering respectful obeisances to the lord along with mother earth you see the mother earth earth is sustaining life uh, on this planet providing for the necessities of all the varieties of living creatures whether they live in the earth or they live on the land or they live in the air or they live in the tree or they live in the ocean or river or in some cave wherever they live forest mother earth provides a suitable requirement for their sustenance everybody has got a home wherever they live they got a home everybody has got food everybody has got some defense mechanism so mother earth provides hmm? so that is the uh, nature of uh, the devotee of the supreme lord even though the supreme lord is the provider eko bahunam yo vidhati kama the supreme lord is a provider but he provides through his Uh, internal potential devotees yoga maya yoga maya through yoga maya through his internal potency he provides uh, for everyone that internal potency in the material world because the conditions souls are ours to the lord and even to the lord's devotees mm, therefore the lord has made arrangement indirectly he provides through his uh, internal potency manifested as the external energy durga devi and he himself is manifested as the father uh, durga devi is the mother and uh, <clears throat> as the father he is present as his incarnation called shiva they follow the uh, followers of uh, uh, shiva they chant one prayer to shiva and parvati uh, that uh, parvati is the mother of everyone in this world and shiva is the father so that's a fact from the material perspective somebody who is unable to understand uh, the spiritual higher truth or reality for them in this material world when krishna says i am the seed giving father which is the verse that proper quotes here 
this conception of the lord and the earth as father and mother is explained in bhagavad gita 14.4 to the words 14.4 huh uh, read loudly narishwar sarva yonishu kaunte of all living beings who are taking birth in this world huh murtaya means they get their body material body how do they get tasam read tasam brahma mahad yonir aham bija the pita he says i am the seed giving father and all living entities take birth in the womb of material nature they take birth in the womb of material nature what is the translation of that read ragosharan quickly Hmm. Hmm. here mother is not particularly mentioned but mother is mentioned elsewhere previous verse tasam garbham dadham yaham which is that verse ha huh? ha mama yonir mahat brahma read that ha huh. aham ha uh-huh. no 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 ha ha tato bhav sambhav sarva bhutanam tato bhav the translation vedatma read the translation 13.14.3 he impregnates material nature with uh, the seed of the living entities at the beginning of creation when we say mahavishnu glances on material nature hmm? so when he glances he actually uh, injects the living entities into mother nature and they take birth in different species and different bodies so uh, this uh, uh, scriptures explain the supreme lord does not directly contact material nature so the contact with material nature for injecting the living entities is made possible by his incarnation as shiva direct contact with material nature or mother nature is that contact with parvati or durga is done by the incarnation of the lord as shiva because as narayana or as the personality of godhead supreme personality of godhead in any of his expansions also as vishnu he does not directly contact the external energy he is always directly with the internal energy internal energy is yoga maya lakshmi bhoo devi shri devi so many different varieties uh, different forms different energies varieties of energy neela shakti shri shakti so many shaktis are there hmm? but the material world where the influence of the external energy is a bewildering influence a uh, illusioning influence that is made possible by the supreme lord incarnating as shiva so incarnation gunavatara there are three gunavataras hmm chaitanya mahaprabhu discuss different kinds of avatar in that he describes to sanatan goswami there are guna avatars three guna avatars uh, incarnation of the uh, lord in the mode of goodness is vishnu 
and incarnation of the Lord in the mode of passion is Brahma and incarnation of the Lord in the mode of ignorance is Shiva now as far as the identity is concerned this incarnation of Vishnu is directly the supreme personality of Godhead he is the Lord himself with all his potencies with all his powers is directly the Lord whereas the incarnation of Brahma is a jiva who is empowered to direct the mode of passion to act as a director of the mode of passion Vishnu personally directs the mode of goodness Brahma directs the mode of passion and Shiva directs the mode of ignorance Shiva is neither a jiva nor is he Vishnu he is a special personality in his own category he is in his own category shiva tatva hmm? shiva tatva is shiva in a special category neither jiva nor vishnu but in between that is explained in the brahma samhita and also the bhagavata hmm? brahma samhita says shiram yatha dadhi vikar vishesha yoga when milk turns into curd there is a special process that uh, the action of acid lactic acid on milk turns milk into curds yogurt kshiram yatha dadhi kshira is milk dadhi is curds or yogurt so what is that action kshiram yatha dadhi vikar vishesh yoga there is a special action that it appears like milk is spoiled when acid mixes with milk but under specific conditions if that milk is cultured by properly mixing with a little yogurt itself then the milk turns into yogurt and yogurt is even though it is milk only essentially it is milk only it is nothing other than milk uh, what is the next line shiram yatha dadi vikara vishesh yogat sanjayate nahi tatah prithag hmm? asti heto uh, the curd or the yogurt is different from milk in its properties if milk causes somebody's stomach upset because if they have loose motion then yogurt or curd can stop the loose motion see totally opposite milk has got a warming effect curd has got a cooling effect opposite so uh, even though essentially curd is also same as milk sanjayate nahi tata prutagasti heto it is not curd is not different from milk but still in its action in its uh, properties it is opposite of milk so uh, the brahma samhita says yogurt is simultaneously uh, same as milk and different from milk similarly ya shambhutam api uh, what is that verse ya shambhuma shambhutam api samupaiti karyat ya shambhutam api samupaiti karyat govindam adi purusham tam tamaham bhajami Uh, shambhutam the state of being shiva is non different from govinda simultaneously it is different hmm? because shiva he is incarnation of the supreme lord so he has the potent the power of the supreme lord but he also is not the supreme lord 100% 
he's got partial potency of the supreme lord for a specific purpose what is that purpose the purpose is to actually uh, act as the director of the tamoguna and so many other functions shiva has a lot of functions hmm? he is also bhuta natha he is the uh, shelter and protector of the ghosts ghostly creatures extremely sinful creatures who don't even have a proper grass body hmm? and are uh, struggling in the ghostly body hmm? frustrated trying to enjoy in the ghostly body because they are unable to so he is the protector and the lord of varieties of ghostly creatures bhutanath hmm? he is a lord of durga he is a lord of durga and he is the uh, the the director of the tamoguna like this he has got many 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 different forms hmm? 11 principal forms called the 11 rudra expansions of shiva 11 hmm? that is described in the bhagavatam uh, by uh, shukadev goswami hmm? uh, 11 rudra expansions of shiva and then they have got specific functions each of the 11 expansions all functions have something to do with this material world they don't operate in the spiritual world they all operate in the material world only no else hmm? so that shiva incarnation is the uh, one who directly comes in contact with Uh, durga for producing the varieties of living beings so that is one explanation in the scriptures how living entities take birth in the womb of material nature uh, the impregnation by injecting the the seed at the beginning of creation is done by shiva but on the spiritual platform it is mahavishnu who glances on the uh, material energy glances on the material energy and impregnates the living entities by injecting them into material nature hmm? so uh, the supreme lord as mahavishnu as vishnu the personality of god does not touch the material energy does not contact directly the material energy so when such contact is necessary then the lord incarnates as shiva hmm? he incarnates as shiva and shiva's position is very difficult to understand that he is the supreme lord but he is not the supreme lord also hmm? is in between his position is in between that that of a jiva and the supreme lord hmm? so uh, the non devotees they worship the supreme lord either as parmatma or as brahman or sometimes as uh, shiva and parvati hmm? and uh, the mayavada philosophy says shiva and parvati are Uh, actually the manifestation of the supreme brahman the impersonal brahman in the material world hmm? god supreme absolute truth is impersonal brahman but they have manifested as shiva and parvati this is the mayavada philosophy hmm? but it is not the right understanding this mayavada philosophy and this impersonal brahman is uh, uh, the energy of the lord and that energy is always controlled uh, and uh, directed 
by the Supreme Lord Himself, the personality of Godhead. So, Shiva is an incarnation of the personality of God, not of the impersonal Brahman. Neither Durga Devi is an incarnation of impersonal Brahman, no. Durga Devi is one of the energies of the Supreme Lord. She is controlled. Ichana Rupam Vyasya Tesa. Durga Devi conducts herself exactly according to the will of Govinda. Hmm? So that will of Govinda is expressed as the control over the three gunas by the three directors. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Hmm? So, uh, we have a clear understanding from the Shastras about the truth or the reality. What is happening in this material world in terms of creation, maintenance, destruction. The gunas, their directors. Uh, the beginning of creation, everything is explained very clearly in the uh, scriptures. But uh, people who don't follow the parampara system, they speculate or they theorize or they philosophize and they come up with various different uh, theories about this world and the creation, etc. Stop here. Bhagavatam ki jaya